This is a HeadGum Podcast. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this here podcast episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, since it's the new year, a lot of people have New Year's resolutions, uh, and Squarespace is reminding you to make your next move. Make your next website with Squarespace. So let's say your resolution is to perhaps start a new business, change your career, or launch Take a creative over the project. Gosh darn world. Yeah, yeah, one one URL at a time. Well, Squarespace makes it easy to make your next move with a beautiful website, with a unique domain name, uh, with beautiful templates, uh, all in one platform, twenty four seven customer support, and Squarespace offers a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. You even get a free domain when you sign up for your Squarespace. Correct, Amundo. But I know what you're thinking. All the good domain names are taken. Worry not. Every time Squarespace endorses one of uh-huh. our episodes, we provide you with a capable and able and available URL for you to purchase if you act fast. Mine is January32nd.com. Whoa. Not a real date, but it is a real URL that is taken. Every date in January is taken, so you got to get a little fictional. january 32 Dot com. I love it. What's the yours? mystical beyond. And yours? Mine, if your New Year's resolution is to be an entertainer at a child's birthday party, uh-huh. I suggest you call yourself the Frown Town Clown, hmm? because that's available. <laughs> the Frown Town Clown? And, uh, so isn't it, why Frown Town? Because it rhymes with clown. <laughs> it seems like that's a bad clown if he's almost, the word frown is well, in that's it. That's why you need him. What? Everyone's in Frown Town? And you better call the, the clown. clown God. <laughs> the Frown Town Clown. All right, I'm in. Uh, so, <laughs> if you're looking for a beautiful way, a, sorry, I should say a simple way to make a beautiful website, uh, make your next move with Squarespace. Uh, and if you go to squarespace.com and enter our offer, offer code, if I were you, you get 10% off your first purchase. Damn. So, already low prices. And then if you go to squarespace.com, enter an offer code, if I were you, you get 10% off. They're already uh, affordable prices. That's it. Deuces. Thanks, Squarespace. It's all right to send in questions to me as dudes. I'm sure that you read them and then try to help you. Don't think it on you. I guess they're, they're pretty chill. Yeah, dude. Oh shit, man! It finally happened. <laughs> Do you know what that song is called? <laughs> it's called "Damn It." <laughs> uh, I always thought that song was called "I Guess This Is Growing Up." No, it's called "Damn It." Yeah, it's called "Damn It." You're right. Yeah. Uh, was that uh, fucking Hoppus that sang that? No, it was our That's old. So dope, it's- man. <laughs> It's not. I can't believe he listens to this show. I should text him and just Who? be like, <laughs> I should text Mark and just say, yo, man, thanks for the song. Hope all is well or something. Do you have his number? No. <laughs> oh, you just want to be able to text if him. If someone could get me Mark Hoppus' number, I could text him and Got say, it. yo, man, it's Jake. Hope all is well. Right, right, right. Thanks for the song. Of course. Uh, that's actually soon becoming our new favorite theme songwriter, Josh No Joshua. Ooh. Who's yeah. on Instagram and SoundCloud as Josh No Joshua. La, uh, sorry, Love from Brazil. He's Brazilian. Ooh, very good. He says, hope you like it. I think Jake will appreciate it. So, thoughts? Excuse me? He said, hope you guys like it. I think Jake will appreciate it. Huh? <laughs> uh, I guess he thinks you're a Blink-182 fan. Yeah, I'm a Mark Hoppus fan. That's why it's so awesome that Mark Hoppus wrote that for me. <laughs> uh, how old was Blink-182 when they wrote that song? And then how old were you when you loved it? Hmm. Was it like a 23-year-old writing for to a 12-year-old? 
Well, I I guess I don't know how old Mark Hoppus was when he wrote um, "What's My Age Again" because in that song he specifically references the fact that he's twenty three. Yeah, uh, I guess I imagine that they wrote "Damn It" when they were twenty one, and I loved it when I was fifteen. But you also loved it when you were twenty one. I mean, I love it now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm way the older. Fine wine, <laughs> it's aged well. It grows better with age. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I guess I loved it the max when I was like sixteen or seventeen, which is pretty close to like the age of the artist. Yeah, well, I don't know how old is Mark Hoppus now? Like forty two or something? Oh, that's a good question. Mark Hoppus. I feel like Hoppus is a level of dude we can get on the show. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Be he's absolutely incredible. He, <laughs> he's 44. Hmm. Let's see how many Twitter followers he has. It's going to be... <clears throat> you think it's in the M? You think he's got M's? <laughs> I, it's funny because I do think that, but I feel, I just have like this bad feeling that it's going to be so much lower. Uh, but I think it's over the... I think it's, I think it's in the M's. Good news, man. It's almost 3M. Is it really? Yeah. Hell yeah. So he did, you think we can get that on the show? He'll, he won't even respond to us on Twitter. Really? I don't think so. I think we can figure out a way to get his attention. Maybe when this episode comes out. He did make a video with College Humor back in the day. That's Streeter true. might know him. Is he, he... I don't know if he... I feel like everybody reads their tweets, even like someone like Hoppus. Yeah, but when you're... I think when you have 3 million followers... It's just constant... Yeah, there are like some days where I don't read all of my ads, and I have so much. <laughs> I have honestly probably half the followers that Mark Hoppus. <laughs> yeah, has. wow, so much less than half. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> half would be a million and a half. Well, that's awesome for me. <laughs> I can't believe. It. I mean, that's still pretty good. I guess maybe he will read a tweet from me. If... First of all, even in your delusion of grandeur, you said you don't think you have half as many. Right. So you have 70,000. So how many is that compared to Hoppus? <laughs> well, well, you have, if, if half is 1.5 million, yeah. you have a t- uh, one-tenth of half of that. One-tenth of <laughs> half of that. So half twice and then a tenth. All right, move on. <laughs> Dot org. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if I, if I tweet at Hoppus the day this episode comes out and says, at Mark Hoppus, hey, you, would you please be on our podcast? And then everyone who wants to help us out replies to that or retweets it. Like, oh my God, you gotta. Then he'll think we have thousands of, I mean, we do have thousands, but he thinks if thousands of people are retweeting and uh-huh. commenting on Twitter about it, then we must have millions of fans. That'd be Little does he know, we personally asked everybody listening to find that tweet. Well, he might find out that we are doing this now. I don't think he'll find this part out. You think? I think that somebody's going to fucking spill the guy. Well, now beat. they're going to spill it because you told them to All spill right, the don't beans. spill the beans. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you even put the spill beans in their head? <laughs> now some troll is gonna spill the beans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so nobody spill the beans. Everyone retweet and organically chime in. Say so, yeah, this. Oh, would be great. definitely, it would be totally. fucking great. I agree. That's why it's not that terrible of an ask. Yeah. So find the tweet. I'll put it online by the time. Hopefully, you guys are listening to this. Mark Hoppus. I assume he lives in L.A., right? Or did he? I think they. I, I maybe he he was in L.A. I I remember they're from San Diego. They right. might be like so rich and successful to the point where you get to like move back to it, just kind of be wherever you want. Didn't you? Weren't you at a hockey game once, sitting next to him? Yeah, I t- I talked to him at a hockey game one time. Did you like? Were you like big fan, or were you like you're everything? You're I my Elvis. It, I played it kind of cool for a little while, and like we were just talking about stuff, and I had made a joke, and then. Uh, and then, like, midway through the hockey game or, like, near the end, I was like, I'm never going to get to <laughs> tell him this again. So I was like, I'm a, you're, I, you're, I'm a big fan. I, like, grew up listening to you. And yeah. he was like, and then he was just like, thanks, and then he didn't talk to me anymore the rest <laughs> of the game. It is funny. Like, why – I would do that, too, if I, like, sat next to, let's say, um, Larry David or Woody Allen at a hockey game. And I'm like, right. oh, my God. I, I have to tell him, like – 
I feel such a need. Uh, what if I don't tell him? Right. Like, I, it doesn't affect him. It's and not it doesn't for him. Make... It is definitely for you. You're right, but You're why, like, why, why am I happy of of if I don't share this with him? <laughs> he has to know that I love him a lot. He has to know that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to regret it. <laughs> what if I live my life and I never confess to him that I'm a fan of his? Yeah. I what wonder, a waste it would be. I guess it probably would have been a better experience uh, if I didn't say anything, because then maybe he would have like warmed up to me, talked to me like a peer. Oh yeah, and then I could have like left and been like Mark Hoppus was friendly to me. Yeah, but can you imagine like saying to your friends or people that knew you were such a big fan that you sat next to Mark Hoppus and didn't say yeah, anything? Did you tell him how much you loved him? Nah, it didn't come up. It was I, I... <laughs> you had to tell him. How did you not say to him that you're a fan of him? Like the hope is that you get like validated in some real way for loving them for that long. Like, right. I, like I grew up listening to you. I think you're amazing, and he and you get some sort of like, uh, like that's oh, that's awesome. That's why I do it. Thanks for sharing that. Or is it the the goal of like he's like that's awesome. We should be friends. I I, I don't know if I ever thought that like he was gonna be like no way. I should hang out with you. <laughs> That's if cool, man. Just, Let's do Blinner. Yeah, he, he, he would have way too many friends if he hung out with all of his fans. 2.92 million fans. Anyway, I would love to have him on and talk about this. I bet he uh, doesn't remember being at this hockey game. This is what we could talk to him about on the show. Yeah. Find our tweet, guys. Chime in. Uh, all right. What is this? This is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the interweb hosted by us. I'm Amir. I'm Jake. What we do is answer people's questions. They'll email us. They're confused. They're scared. They're at a crossroad in their lives of sorts. And we do our best to tell them what we would do in their similar situation. Thousands of emails. Only the best of the best make it to the show. Mm -hmm. I found two. You found two in this episode. That's correct. Uh, let's start with one of mine. Okay. <sighs> I forwarded it to us, and I said question one. No, I don't know if I can find it. Oh, here we go. All right. Question one writes, should we call this guy Mark? That's a great idea. We're going to um, give this real email from a real person, fake name, just to preserve his anonymity. Mark writes, I'm writing because I don't know how to properly deal with this situation, my girlfriend and I have been dating for close to a year now, and we are really, really happy. We've known each other since my sophomore and her freshman year of college, now four years, and we're really good friends before we started dating. In the almost year that we've been together, we have never had a single argument because we agree on pretty much every topic you could. Recently, however, I discovered that she has been occasionally sending nudes to a Tumblr page that does a submission-based, quote, topless Tuesday. These were all photos that were sent to me first, so she doesn't think it's a problem. However, I think it is. I brought it up. <laughs> I brought it up a few times, but I never want to. But I never went fully into it because I don't want to ruin our streak of never having an argument. We're moving in together within the next few months, and plan. And I plan to put a ring on it soon after. Ooh. I feel like I should be the only person to see her naked. I feel like I should be the only person to see her naked, but she feels like it's a piece of self-expression. Please help me figure out how to bring this up to her. Love, Mark. Let's call him Mark. Interesting question. So it looks like uh, maybe they, maybe they do disagree on some shit. I'm pretty busy right now on this topless Tuesday Tumblr. Oh, is it a is it a thing? Uh, you tell oh, me, brother. Oh, my boobs. It's a thing. Look at her boobs. So I think the biggest the biggest detail here is that the pictures are of boobs, no face. Are they? Uh, there's some face. Oh, it really now there's some face, no boobs. There's some, yeah, there's several actually topless Tuesday tumblers. This one's face bra. So... I guess the topless part is sort of a, a stretch. Well, all right. So anyway, start from the beginning. The beginning is this guy gets photos from his girlfriend and she wants to express herself. Even to a wider audience, submits her photos to a topless Tuesday Tumblr where anybody can see the nudity. And his problem is clear. He he doesn't want his girlfriend doing that. Yeah. And his reason uh, to not make an issue is because they've never had a fight. Yeah, you don't want to ruin the Is the, the reason streak. you've never had a fight because you're too much of a coward to bring up any time that you uh, don't want, that you disagree with your girlfriend? Yeah, that could be a definite reason as to why people I don't, don't think fight. It's if like somebody's a... so passive, then they would never fight. 
I I don't think it's like a point. Like it's not necessarily a good thing if you never fight with with your significant other. Oh. It's the it's 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 the quality of your fights that matter. Like, do you have not the quantity? Do you have fights and uh, disagreements that? Uh, you can discuss rationally without blowing up at each other and right. understand and empathize with the other person's point of view and uh, not lose your patience and see the fight through to the end. That's a good fight. That's an interesting fight. And you want to have those fights. You want to have these like disagreements and discussions. And yeah. It makes your relationship evolve. But then if you're like, oh, we never fight and I don't even want to like get into it at yeah. all. Like, that's not necessarily healthy. That's just like you guys... You know, sweeping things under the rug that yeah, never get that lumpy ass rug. You're eventually gonna trip on it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> um, that was I made sort of uh, I think three high pitched joke and size. then size yeah, and then I w- sort of laughed like a dolphin. <laughs> I see. That was you laughing at the joke, not somebody pantomiming somebody slipping on the rug. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That was me laughing at my own joke, as if I were like, <laughs> like a dolphin, <laughs> kind of like a dolphin, kind of like a monkey. Like ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Like a dolphin doing a trick where it's sort of making noise for the audience and maybe skimming across the top of a lake. Uh huh. <laughs> N- yeah, nearly entirely. What's the opposite of submerged? Post merged. Uh huh. Yeah, just the just the bottom ten percent, sort of gliding across the top of the lake. Yeah. Making noises, waving to the crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what you said at the end of a joke. <laughs> uh, I do think it was a good point. You sweep enough things under the rug, and you're that's gonna true. trip over the lumps. <laughs> <laughs> so the question, how about this deeper question, is. Is is this something that would perturb you? I, and why? What's the deeper psychological thing beyond uh, his rationale, which is these photos are meant for me only? Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I don't think that like they're photos like... of her. They're meant for whoever she wants to share them with. Yeah. So, but why? I mean, I would also be a little uneasy. I guess I wouldn't. I would. I would also be uneasy, but not because I would be like I'm the only person allowed to see you naked. It would be more like, what if like my parents saw this somehow? What right? If would they? My friends found out. What if like I don't know? But is it them seeing it, or is them? Is it them judging your girlfriend being like, right, hey, now it, she now everyone yeah. thinks you're kind of crazy, and that's a bad look for me. Right. I guess, and that is a weird thing, you know. The the in. In theory, it is fine. Whatever she wants to do with the photos, but I guess my question, my question would be like, why did you want to do this with the photos? Yeah, what, is... what did you get out of this uh, that I that you know we can't uh, provide for each other? Yeah, validation probably. I remember talking to you once about how certain ladies on Instagram just post pictures, sexy pictures of themselves. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "That's so interesting because I wouldn't do that." But what I my version of that is posting funny pictures. I always want the pictures to be funny because I think I'm funny. Oh yeah, that's my value. Mm-hmm. For some people, men or women, their value is their looks. It's like I want to just post hot photos. They don't have to be funny. They don't even think about making them funny. They just want right. to be like attractive, I attractive, look good attractive. In this yeah. Photo. There's also uh, the idea that you have. Somebody like you, you like go to shows and people come and see you and people take photos of you, but there's not necessarily a lot of like, you know, for for people that post a lot of photos them themselves, what other outlet do they have of photos of them being posted? Right, it's sort of like up to them. Yeah, they have to do it. Yeah, and I also sometimes post pictures of myself that I think I look good in. I'm like, oh, that's a good picture of me, and I have to like post it. But then I have to post it with a funny, funny caption. Otherwise, I have to like wink at everyone and be like, you can't make fun of the fact that I'm posting basically a, a headshot because yeah, I'm going to make a you funny posted comment. posted yesterday, I'm handsome here. <laughs> My Facebook profile picture. Yeah, I wrote, I'm handsome. That's like the next level of being like, I know that you think I'm just doing this because I am think I'm handsome. I'm going to undercut it with a joke. It's like, no, now the joke is that I'm plainly saying in the caption, yeah. I'm handsome here. You can't here. say it. Yeah. <laughs> the M&M theory of I'm going to make fun of myself, yeah. tell them something they don't know about me. I don't know how we got into this. Oh, self-expression. Yeah. So this lady wants to self-express herself, express herself 
by posting topless photos of her on the internet. Uh, can this guy have an argument about it? You can definitely have an argument about anything. Who knows if you're in the right? Right. Is there a right? Uh, no, because it's, it's not illegal to post photos of yourself <laughs> on the internet, topless or otherwise. Well, I guess if you're underage, but she's not. So she wants to post these photos. Uh, you don't want her to post the photos. Yeah. I think you've got to really examine why you don't want her to post the photos. Uh, it's a hard, hard question to ask yourself. Answer. And maybe it is just like straight up, I am jealous. I don't want other people looking at your naked body. I think that should just be for me. <laughs> That's like I a think... cool privilege I get yeah. for dealing with your other shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like a little controlling or something. Maybe it's not. Who knows? It's not really, but that's not like what I would be super concerned by. Right. Uh, but then you have to also – got to – once you ha you have to have that you have that discussion you've got to be willing to have the ensuing argument because you guys are diametrically opposed on this one issue foes yeah uh please help me figure out how to bring this up to her uh probably very plainly simply stating oh bt dubs i feel really uncomfortable when i see photos of your naked body on the internet yeah and she'll say why? And you'll say, "Ah, uh? this is what you've. This is where you've already decided exactly what you're going to say." So, but I think whatever it, his reasons are, I think a, a bad, or at the very least, bad sounding reason is because these belong to me. Because I think that will turn her off. Because yeah. that seems very possessive. Right. Like photos of her naked body belong to you, and that's sort of like the. That's like the doofus meathead immediate response like because they're my tits yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like you could there is uh, uh there's like a, a more uh thoughtful way of phrasing that like you do feel like these tits are just for you to look at because they're it's a, it's a special bond between you and your loved one yeah they're very private intimate, private thing literally that she, private that you would imagine that you only want to share with each other and because they're being shared her tits are being shared with a wider audience feel like it's diluting this the the specialness <laughs> of seeing them when you guys are having yeah. your own intimate moments yeah so that is sort of a long-winded way of saying they're my tits <laughs> <laughs> but like I, do, I think that you come the pure heart rule once again rises. Uh, you, you say, you say, <laughs> <laughs> there's only so much specialty coming out of your breasts, and you're sharing it with the world, and I get less of it. Uh, how about what? What do you? Uh, how do you like this live stream? He starts J -ing O. She loves it. What? <laughs> <laughs> How can you love this self-expression, this yeah, self-love? You've got to explore it from the most, uh, from the most loving aspects of your of your mind. Mm -hmm. Don't think of it as like they're my tits. You can't show them to other people. You have to think of it. Why do you think they're your tits, or why are her tits so special, and why do the things that happen to her tits and the people who see her tits, why does it make you? feel good or bad or otherwise mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just strictly because it's, they're your tits it's because you care about the tits a lot yeah you basically can't force her to do it you have to sort of give her your thoughts and then she has to make up her own mind to say you know what the positive feelings that i get of posting my boobies aren't worth the negative feelings that I'm, f I'm inflicting onto my future fiancé. And the last thing I'll say on this is to be very patient because just like you're trying to change her mind to not put her tits online, she may try to change your mind to to let her do it. Yeah. Or to at least f to not let her do it, but to feel comfortable with her doing it. So be open to that too. I will say that if it's the photos of the boobies without the face he has less of a leg to stand on yeah well but what if her argument is like I, my face isn't in it so it's not a bad thing like i'll never get uh, they'll never find out that it's me yeah i would to that i would say people might find out it's you how 
there's like identifying things on your body. You could like <laughs> find out who, like what email address submitted them. Uh -huh. There's like ways that this, if she's like, oh, I'm submitting them and it's like totally anonymous, it's a safe space. Yeah. I don't think that's necessarily true. Right. But so she's got to be cool with like it potentially being uh, a known fact that it, those are her tits. But wouldn't that bother you less if there was faceless pictures yeah, it would bother of the lady? Me. It would definitely bother me less, but. I'd still like want to know why she felt like uh, she wanted to do it. All right. All right. Let's uh, get to another question. Let's call this guy Travis. This one is one that he you He plays found. the drums <laughs> <laughs> in my favorite band. <laughs> uh, all right. Travis writes, I'm not sure how to proceed with a really far out woman I've met recently. I think there's a real connection here. The only thing is she's dating a friend of mine. Uh oh. Bum, bum, bum. Her and I always seem to catch each other's gaze. We share a lot of personal and creative stuff and tend to engage in a healthy amount of physical contact. Not to mention, she seems to be fine with our slowly, increasingly flirty conversations and seem to be cold towards her boyfriend, sometimes too turning away from his affection and sticking up for me between normal guy to guy ribbing. <laughs> I've considered that she might just be a flirty person, but I haven't seen her being like this to other guys. We've hung out uh, once on our own, and there was some really serious conversation, like how she doesn't feel attracted to her boyfriend, and how he smothers some of her favorite activities of her personality. That particular time felt a lot like a first date. We walked around a park, got coffee, went back to my place to smoke some of that wacky tobacco, and chill with her cat. My friend and I are fairly good pals, but I've been seeing our friendship differently after picking up some weird vibes uh, when I once brought a dime piece around him. How do I navigate a sticky sitch like this? Hugs and kisses, Travis. Uh, Definitely feels like the, some of the weird vibes you might catch from your friend <laughs> could be because you're stealing his girlfriend. <laughs> Very openly and plainly. <laughs> Imagine if you were dating someone and I was just like, yeah, we walked around the park, got coffee, got high, and hung out with her cat. That wouldn't be okay. No. <laughs> uh, this, this guy also seems like he's project, like super hyper sensitive to the point of projecting. He's like, oftentimes she'll side with me on certain guy-to-guy -guy ribbings that I've noticed. Yeah. I think she sort of set, stole me a gaze at uh, during one argument, and I felt we like she was implicitly... We catch each other's gaze. <laughs> it's like, you stare at her a lot. <laughs> Sometimes she has to look at you. <laughs> by default. By accident. Uh, this is like that Friends episode where Chandler was a better match with Joey's girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Remember, and then Chandler went into the box to apologize. I do remember that. But then eventually Joey told him to run after her because... You know what? Sometimes people just do belong better with other people. And did they? I they think they ended, ended up, up together. Dating. That person was Monica. Monica. It is interesting. Like sometimes, sometimes people's girlfriends just belong better with other people. I guess, right? Yeah. Just by borderline by accident. Uh, destiny, fate, I don't know what you want to call it. Like, somebody might be an all right fit with one person, but a much better fit with his friend. Have you ever felt like that about one of my girlfriends? Not one of your girlfriends. I wonder if I ever felt like that with any girlfriend, any friend's girlfriend. Again, what comes to mind is something that I talked about recently where I went on a few dates with someone. I'm like, you belong with my friend better than me. I've never, like, I've never wanted to steal a friend, but I've thought, like, oh, this fit would be better with them. Oh, yeah. But... Uh, it must happen, right? And it sounds like this guy is very willing to sacrifice the friend to hang out with the girl. <laughs> he loves the girl, and he's sort I of like... like my, <laughs> me and my buddy get along. He's your, your lifelong friend. <laughs> <laughs> my friend and I are fairly good pals. Uh, so is, is there any way to... I think you have to... You can't have both. Yeah, I think it's... Especially with a friend, if you... The most you can really do here is like immediately stop pursuing it, mm -hmm. and then and you Wait. just yeah and like if a natural end ever comes up with the the girls, be like I don't want to pursue anything until like while you're with my friend. Oh, and then that's that's if very wink wink. Yeah, if they're single, if she's single, 
then it's another hard conversation you have to have with a friend. Yeah, like, this is kind of weird. Do you mind if I date her? Yeah, but at the very least, that's, like, a weirdness that can grow to, like, everyone Everyone is going to be fine and normal again. Has that ever happened in your friend group? A girl dating two guys within it? Hmm. It definitely, yes, I know that it has. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Like or maybe, like, it was, like, junior high and then later on... Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, even in our group of friends, like people have all slept with each other and like they, I, yeah, people, hooked up, like, but like legit girlfriends, right? No, I can't think of anything like that off the top of my head, but it had to have happened, <laughs> right? It had to have. Uh, I think the key is like how much time in between. Was there another girlfriend in between? I feel like every like five to seven years, that person is completely different. So, like, yeah. if somebody in my friend group dated my first girlfriend, it wouldn't be like, whoa, that's kind of weird. It's like, oh, it's been, like, 15 years. Right. And we're so kind of So, this guy has to humans. wait 15 years. <laughs> no, nah, not 15, but let's say, uh, let's say one relationship to distance, distance himself from. Oh, that's, I guess that's so easy. So, she can't be back to back. I, I th- you mean, like, he wants, he, his friend needs to date somebody else. Yeah. And break up, and then he can be like, oh, maybe nah, that's I, what it is. It's more about the friend finding someone else, because then the friend can't be jealous because he's in a relationship. Yeah. So, like, once you're, a friend is with somebody else, he can't be like, fuck, I'm jealous of you, because that's sort of a slap to his current girlfriend. It's like, wait, why aren't you just happy in my our relationship? Yeah. I guess that makes it easier, but I still think that as long as the two people are single, then it's, then that, it's, then it's like, fine. It might be weird, but even... But it will also eventually be fine. Yeah. Because you can be upset and then you think like, well, I guess I have no reason to be upset. We did break up. Right. All right. So here's what you do. Let it naturally end. It has to naturally end. You can't force the end. Mm -hmm. Stop going on dates with her because that's going to come back. She's going to eventually say, I've been on five dates with your friend. (laughs) Uh, And then once it naturally breaks up, wait a little bit. I say, wait until your guy finds another girl. Uh, Jake says you don't have to wait that long. Well, I guess it depends on what he's doing. Like, what if he's just like, I want to enjoy being single. Right. Then you're like, oh, well, shit, I really want you to, <laughs> I really would like you to settle down again. <laughs> With me. Uh, all right. That's it. That's the, that's the, that's the advice. Also, uh, it sounds like this guy just straight up wants to end his friendship with the guy and start dating this yeah girl. oh I, yeah I, if I you really so. don't care about the friendship with the guy you might as well just go for the girl i regret that. i think you'll regret that but go ahead uh all right let's take a break we'll come back uh answer two more questions chit chat and the other right after this thank you to blue apron for sponsoring this episode as well namaste <clears throat> baby uh you probably know what blue apron is you've heard about him before but let us tell you a little bit more Frankly, simply put, not all ingredients are created equal. It's hard to find fresh, high-quality ingredients to make a real difference. To make a great meal, Blue Apron literally ships you the specific ingredients you need to make uh, amazing dinners uh, in the precise portions that are necessary to make them. You cook them yourself. You're learning how to cook. You're making your own meals, and it's really, really affordable. That's kind of the trifecta, folks. They're sending you some great stuff, uh, and it's less than $10 per person per meal. It's hard to find a dinner for less than 10 bucks, unless yeah. you're, like, getting a sandwich on the way home. I found dinner for free before <laughs> in a freaking dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredibly sad. I ate uh, trash garbage. <laughs> uh, so if yeah, you're looking for... It was way less than <laughs> freaking 10 bucks. Yeah. It was only four ninety nine. <laughs> Why'd you pay it all? <laughs> I, 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 I'm eating the garbage. There's a mouse coming out of your nose uh so if you're looking for meals that are affordable with great variety you can choose your recipes every week it's flexible you can customize it based on your dietary restrictions and it's easy because they come with step by step step uh steps easy to follow instructions so simple even i figured it out uh and it's guaranteed they have a freshness guaranteed that every ingredient uh, delivery delivery arrives ready to delivery (laughs) delivery Delivery? It actually does Let's, say delivery. You type that. <laughs> That's right. All right. All right. Very good. <laughs> that was an honest From mistake. From the top, Blumenfeld. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're so deep into it. Uh, so you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free. That's three free meals with free shipping. If you go to blueapron.com slash delivery. No? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hard to spell. Blue Apron. <laughs> 
BlueApron.com slash if I were you. BlueApron.com slash if I were you. Loser. Delivery. Yeah. Uh, you'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Toda, baby. Delivery. We have returned. New Year's resolutions? Do you have one? Fuck. You know, I failed on my last New Year's resolution. Which was what? Make my heel stop hurting. Still hurts? Yeah. As much? uh, Yeah. Yeah. Zero improvement in 365 days. There's still things that do, that make it improve. Like when I spend all morning, like rolling it out, stretching, uh, and like rest yeah yeah Yeah. i can like do things that make it feel better right i do those as often as i can but yeah there's still no like (laughs) i i fantasize about just being able to walk (laughs) and not have pain and that hasn't happened okay so this year do you roll it over you say fuck that one let's fucking read more um i'm gonna i i'm gonna roll it over i've been like real hell bent on i i I have not slowed down so i'm i started physical therapy on the heel now Mm. and that's been minor improvements you think that if in a thousand lifetimes you're living the last year there's one where you've healed your heel i think so i asked the doctor that i saw most recently if there was any hope for me ever being (laughs) painful this is all you what you turn your physical therapy into actual therapy yeah is there a hope for me to be happy again he was he like gave he like did my assessment we did a couple exercises (laughs) He's like yeah so do you have any like questions for me and i was like Will I ever be better? <laughs> Is there any Le- hope for me being able to run? Level with me, Doc. Just shoot me fucking straight, man. Because <laughs> as long as I come to grips with that reality, maybe it won't kill me anymore. And what did he say? He said yes, but that it was going to be hard work and it was going to take a lot of effort, which I'm totally down for. Yeah, I have not do missed the day of the exercises since, since he's given them to me. And uh, can he explain it? Can you explain why you have pain always? Um, not really. It the most anybody's ever been able to explain is just that like inflammation is really, really tricky and stubborn. And if I've had it for like many years, it's really hard to to fix it. Right. And that my body's also been like compensating for this pain in ways that I could never even understand. <laughs> where like, your ear hurts. Yeah. Even like. My center of balance has shifted from like the middle of my body to the left side of my body because my left leg has been the one doing more of the yeah. Supporting. You're constantly doing ginger, yeah. gingerly walking on one side versus the right, other. Exactly. Uh, so, so stuff like that, and and he's like he's also uh, testing like the way I breathe and like the muscles in my buttocks. Oh uh, yeah, I saw him squeezing a few of your buttocks. Yeah, he buried his face deep into my buttocks. <laughs> he said, the <laughs> <a flatulate." laughs> I said, does this tickle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Dolphin noise. So my resolution is to sue him. <laughs> use the cash to hire the best podiatrist in America to just put me under the knife, cut me open and take a <laughs> fucking look. Amputate my foot. I don't even care. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Uh, if I'm, they're like, "Well, c- we can cut off your foot, and you would feel no pain," <laughs> we'll I give you a blade. I would almost definitely be down. <laughs> I don't think that they could really guarantee that I'd feel no pain, though, because I'd have to like learn to walk without a foot, right? Or I'd give you a prosthetic foot that wouldn't hurt. Yeah, that's like some sort of really low stakes ver- episode of Black Mirror. Yeah, I'd really want to, the ability to potentially go back. All right, if necessary. Uh, so that and uh, to get ripped. Oh, uh, you're going to get ripped? I'm going to get ripped. That's fun. Again. How does that differ? Are you changing it up or are you just going to continually do what you're doing? Uh, I don't know. It feels like getting ripped is also like kind of intrinsically tied to my foot feeling better. Oh, uh, like you can only get so ripped on an injured foot. Yeah, the best shape I was ever in was when I was like doing sprint training. Right, like, running. I haven't really been able to do that at all. And also, like, ex- those, like, explosive CrossFit mu- movements and shit. Jumping. Yeah, jump rope and burpees and shit. That seems like something I really want to do. And every time I do those, I, it hurts the, the fuck out of my heel. Yeah, have you ever straight up just tried to sprint just to see what it would feel like? Uh, at some point over the last four years, I definitely have tried to sprint. Like, what if it just hurts as much as walking does anyway? 
Yeah, I th- that's actually one of my other resolutions <laughs> is to just straight up sprint and see what happens. Just to see. Yeah, I'm. I definitely. I know that like doing burpees and jogging and jump rope did increase the pain. Oh, that's good. So I imagine that sprinting is going to be the same. But I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sprint on the track, which is a little more bouncy. So a lot of physical uh, resolutions. I'm just gonna go at it. Yeah. Get after it. Yeah. What's, what about you? I want to just become a better person, uh, fix myself emotionally. I also want to make my fucking back stronger. <laughs> what? what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, be nicer to others. Uh, try to empathize more. Right. Uh, see, I'm my... get like fucking dope clothes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want to like really, really. I want my wardrobe to be on fleek and on point <laughs> for the rest of the year. What were you saying? I was just saying, if I can just empathize with, let's say, five people a day, then I put like enough good spirit. If I get into like a world, new pair of shoes, it's every all... day of the week. Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking lit. <laughs> yeah, I would borderline say it's lit AF. <laughs> what were you saying about fucking connecting with a homeless dude or whatever? <laughs> Um, what's your what's your real resolution? Oh, my actual one is to work out more. <laughs> <laughs> well, specifically, I'm working out with Billy, our, our really strong friend. Mm-hmm. So since I hurt my ankle, I was like inactive for two months. So I told Billy, New Year's resolution, I'm going to work out with you every day, Monday through Friday in January, because he works out every day. Does he work out five days a week or seven days a week? He work, goes to the gym four to five days a week, and then he like does basketball and like other stuff on the weekends. So he goes to the gym nearly every single yeah, day. Yeah, so he's exercising every single day. Yeah, but literally at the gym every day. So I said, I'll go with you. That'll like kickstart my fitness. I'll see if I... Because he, he did this with another friend of his. Um, um, I guess I don't have to say his name. Uh, but he that that guy gained like seven pounds of muscle in a month. I'm like, did oh, I want to try that. Did he fat too? Or was he, he already... He was, he was lean. He was lean. He was kind of like me. Like, he didn't really have any fat. And then he, like, shredded it, got more muscle, gained seven pounds in a month. Was he, like, super proud of himself? Yeah, he was he, proud of himself. Does he... Could you notice the difference in his body? If uh, you saw him? I think so. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't really know this friend beforehand, but seeing him now, he's, all like, pretty much as strong as I am, and he had never worked out before. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. He's, like... But he's, like, a lean, strong guy in general. He's, like doing stuff with his hands and so what if uh i mean if you work out every day in january with billy yeah that's only one month are you gonna like keep it up that's the question yeah i don't know i'll see how i feel at the end of january i'm like am i exhausted and tired and this isn't worth it or all right let's fucking do this yeah seeing results that i want more first it's been uh like a week and a half of doing it it's all it's actually been a week so we're recording this on a wednesday so we did thursday friday then monday tuesday wednesday so uh, how is it? How does it feel so far? I feel like I'm working. Um, usually I go to the gym and I'll like run on a treadmill for 20 minutes and I'll do like, all right, today's biceps and triceps, and I'll do like one exercise of one and one of the other. I'm like, this is good. And with Billy, he his cardio is all one day. So there's some days we get there and he's like, all right, let's do biceps today, and we do five or six bicep exercises. Then he's like, all right, and now back exercises. And it's six back exercises. So I'm definitely getting more sore with him than I ever have because I've never done six back exercises. Are all these exercises targeting like one very specific muscle in your back? Yes. Yeah. So he, so he's not doing like six exercises that are all like on your yeah. He'd be uh, like, this one is for these two muscles at the top of your neck. This one is for your lower back on the side. So we like pick up a weight and sort of dip to the right like a little teapot, short oh, wow. and stout. It's like these are Supermans, and they'll they'll focus on the small of your back, or like right next to your spine. And he's like, what will happen is I don't know if it'll actually happen to me, but he said what happened is to him, he does these things called supersets, which are little sets within your sets so Uh like we'll do a bicep workout you know like three sets of 10 or he does 12 10 8 then after the 12 after the 10 after the 8 he does a he picks up a lighter weight and just does 12 uh in addition to the three sets he does like sets within sets interesting and he's like and those little things basically add up to like an extra day at the gym He's like, it's little muscle groups that like are in your stomach or in your back or in your side. And after a while, they all just combine to make, he basically like tr- treats it as like a Voltron combining to make a tight toned, strong, jacked body. Cool. <laughs> Bill is the man. <laughs> but he's been working out for like 10 to 15 years. Right. And I've done it for five days. 
but so I feel sore. Stronger? I think we're probably comparable at this point, <laughs> just because we've both done it the last five days. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, his other, Billy's other thing is to eat a, a lot more protein. Uh, so Billy eats like probably twice as much food as I do. But in addition to that, focusing on protein, 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 like milk, protein shakes in right. the morning, a lot of meat during the day, protein shake at night, like before you go to bed. It's, this is also, uh, I don't know if everybody listening knows this, but Billy played the personal trainer <laughs> in episode seven, I think, or maybe Yeah, eight, of Lonely, Lonely and Horny. Horny. So you can see how quite jacked he is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of life imitating art. Uh, but yeah, I do feel like sore in my chest muscles for the first time ever. My calves are sore. Like we did a leg day, like properly where my calf muscles got sore for the first oh, time. Wow. So, uh, follow my, follow my progress. I'm posting shirtless selfies every day to my Instagram. <laughs> topless Tuesday. <laughs> I'm doing topless Tuesday and Thursdays. Uh, we'll see how long it goes. So far, so good. I'm in it to win it. No regrets. Five days in. I haven't quit yet. Um, but there's still time. Because my other New Year's resolution is to quit sooner. That's nice. Yeah, pull out faster. Uh, let's mention real quickly that we're going to Australia and Hawaii. Hawaii on February 18th, I believe, and Australia March 18th and March 16th in Melbourne and Sydney. Tickets still available to both shows. Live podcasts slash, I want to say we're partying down probably. I, we're definitely going to party in Melbourne and Sydney. Baby. So it's like a comedy show slash party slash night out. I'm going to rage in Fitzroy. That's right. You best believe. I'm going ham and lamb. Lamb would be a city next to Sydney maybe, but of it's course. not. Uh, tickets, uh, all that information is at jakeandamir.com or if I were you show. I believe we sold out the uh, both of our shows in Mel Melbourne and Sydney last year. That's true. So tickets uh, are unlimited resource. Grab Hopefully. them whilst you can. All right. Should we answer? Let's. I think we're almost out of time because we talked a shitload about our resolutions, which are incredibly vain, just improving our physical sense. Uh, but maybe that's important. You know. Yeah, you have to feel good about yourself. It's, ultimately, it's, yeah, it's all about self-image. Um, and let's answer one last question that you sent to me that you said was good. I haven't read it yet. Ooh, I, and I forget what it says. Uh, I can't come without visual stimulation. This one? That's about right. <laughs> uh, Tom? Uh, yeah, well, Tom's not really in Blink-182 anymore, but I have, let's let's go with it because he's my favorite. Uh, Tom. Unless Mark Hoppus comes on the show, <laughs> then he's my favorite. <laughs> uh, Tom writes, hey, guys, love the show. Is uh I'm in quite a predicament and could use some advice. My girlfriend and I have been dating for around two years, and we've been having sex for around that. Uh, I've been having sex for around the same time. During that time of the month for her, she's super cool and continues to pleasure me without reciprocation. Not really down to earn my red wings, <laughs> but the issue is I can't come just from blowjobs. I have either I have to either secretly look at pictures of other girls. Or, like, watch porn with no volume or snap a pic, anything taboo, and then I do hide it when I finally come. I don't want to make her feel like sh uh, like she's shitty at it, uh, and she's not, but my issue is I would like to come without it. I feel like a douche, so I would love some, I would love some help. Thank you very much. Love, Tom. So this guy's looking at porn while his girlfriend blows him. I cannot. I this is. I like could not believe that he's <laughs> surreptitiously like watching porn on his phone That's, while he's getting like how you have a bad imagination. Just Jesus. close your eyes for Christ's sake. Can you like where is, is she? Just like under a bunch of covers <laughs> and <laughs> listening to music. I, he's <laughs> taking out a magazine. You imagine just like forgetting to put. Put the volume off the porn. Oh my god! Oh, oh, pre-roll. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, babe. One second. Oh, I'm gonna not. I just really have to watch Apple movie trailers while you blow me. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I can't come without visual stimulation. Can you relate to this? Uh, no. I mean, getting a blowjob is pretty visually stimulating <laughs> yeah it seems like the blowjob is doing the heavy lifting what's what's getting him over the goal line is a photo yeah i don't like think 
At worst, can't he close his eyes and imagine somebody blowing him? Yeah. Close your eyes. <laughs> That's what that Beatles song is about. Close your eyes and I'll picture a girl fucking fixtures. <laughs> <laughs> That's what gets him off. A fucking, a, girl fucking a woman fixtures. riding a sconce. <laughs> How are the sconces in your house? The sconces are really coming together. <laughs> and they're coming. Sconce upon a time. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I forgot you were order, oh, opening that sconce store. This, we ordered a bunch of sconces for my new house, and uh, the, the, one of them is too dim. Mm, I always thought sconce was just the, the thing that you put the bulb That's in. That's the fixture, yeah. But the, we got like a... A it's one of those. Bulb. It's yeah. It's like the the point of the thing is to like be the ex, you have the exposed bulb. Yeah. So it's got to be sort of like a a, a nice a bulb, vintagey looking Edison bulb yeah. type thing. I, I ordered s- some brighter ones online. We'll see if they do the trick. You think you I'll can... keep you posted, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> At sconceuponatime.tumblr.com. <laughs> sconceuponatime. Uh, how can I? I feel like a douche. I would love some help. Uh, close your eyes and think of something else. Don't look at photos while your girlfriend's blowing yeah, you. Yeah, at the very, I guess, like if you really feel like you need some sort of extra <laughs> visual stimulation, maybe just like put something on a mantle or like near your bed. Have a photo. I, I don't know. I I don't like the idea of him like get like somebody. A blowjob is such a an intimate, nice gesture. It's a, it's such a favor. Do you think a blowjob always comes with a handjob or that's just a bonus? Um, Do you I think guess... a handjob is part of the blowjob or like not necessarily? Maybe not necessarily. But maybe that would help if she's... Used her hand more? Yeah, both hand and blow. Two jobs for the price of fun. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely the best way to get a blowjob. Is to get a handjob too. Yeah, I will. Or do you have to say that or just inc- you say... Use, I guess you could say use your hand or... Maybe you just wait till she uses her hand, and then you say, "You." I like it like that. Uh, you got soul, <laughs> got soul. <laughs> Singing. I can only come while doing karaoke. I I really think yeah, you should you should be able to like close your eyes. I, I you hear people that like can't come from blowjobs and they're like oh I can only really come from sex right but you never hear anybody that's like I can't come from blowjobs because I'm not looking at anything the best part about sex is that I can see a picture of my girlfriend <laughs> not sucking a dick and that's what I like the most I th- what if I th- he's looking at a picture of her that's kind of nice but you could also <laughs> just look at her yeah but her her face is down. So you take a... You're mostly seeing your own monster it's, pubis. <laughs> it's a nice... She can't get mad if you look... At, she looks up and you're just staring at an eight and a half by 11 inch framed high res glossy headshot of her. Yeah, that's true. I guess you could just like take a really sexy photo of her and keep it by your bed. Oh, that's nice. Or make a, ma- a mad fold in so it's like actually someone else. But then when she looks up, you snap it open and it's actually a her. a smart idea. Some sort of optical illusion. Is it an old woman or a young lady? Yeah, you could strategically hang something somewhere. <laughs> but I, I maybe, just feel like you should be able to... Maybe you need to change your um, blowjob positioning. Like, I don't know. I just don't know what their setup is. Like what versus what back versus side? Yeah, like maybe he's he's lying on his back and he's a little too rigid. Maybe he needs to get a little more comfortable. <laughs> maybe like the side is the way to go, or maybe he like yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think that there are other factors that aren't your visual stimulation. It, it's something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so do that instead of looking at photos of other girls. Yeah, definitely don't look at photos of other girls while your girlfriend's blowing you. That's sort of a <laughs> um, that's a, a no no to do. Uh, all right, if you guys have your own stupid questions, just kidding, they're not stupid. If you have your own questions or your own theme song submissions, send them all over to if I were you show at gmail dot com. We're coming to Hawaii. We're coming to Australia. Buy tickets. Hang out with us there. Uh, live podcasts, live shows, live parties. Do hang out. Uh, the opening That's theme right. song was written by, oh yeah, Josh No Joshua. This closing one was written by Hermes Winters, a lovely singing voice. Uh, her Tumblr uh, is chronicbedhead.tumblr.com. So thanks, Josh No Joshua. Thanks, Hermes. Thanks to you guys for listening. 
We'll be back next week, if you can believe it, because we're back every single Monday. Uh, thanks. Toda. Good night. Good fight. Goodbye. Cheers. Jake and Damir, how could you help me with my problem? See the issues that I have are too complicated. I seem to lost my way. And maybe I'll just go ask Dave. If I mess up, do you think I'll be hated? I should email if I were you And listen to you too Give me the answers to my situation Cause I need advice from a podcast station To show the hope I'll overcome the blow Learn to take it well I hope that you two guys Can get me out of this hell I hope boss is the cheese Jake and Amir Won't you help me please That was a HeadGum Podcast <laughs>